Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul, and I'm a nerd, and you are here for the, what is, what month is this, Patty? July? Um, August? It's July. But what's the temperature out? It's in the 70s? It's awesome. It is. <laughs> well, of course, we paid for it last last week. Right. Whenever it was uh, 99 degrees. So we are calling, or we, we are in Dundee, Michigan, where it's in the 70s today and lovely. And so, I, let, let me finish my sentence. Welcome. You are here for our July 2018 Coffee Pot webinar, where today we are talking to Dennis Dimka from Uptime Legal about hosted desktop solutions. So thank you very much, Paul, for that introduction, and thanks uh, all of you for joining on our webinar today. Excited to talk. And of course, we'll be covering uh, how to move tabs three, practice master, world docs, and everything else for that matter to the cloud. So at Paul's request, a brief introduction, a little bit about me. Uh, of course, my name is Dennis Dimka. I'm the CEO of Uptime Legal Systems. Uh, my personal background is in technology and IT. And today, I really spend my days advising law firms on legal technology. Uh, and, and in doing so, I and Uptime have moved hundreds of law firms to the cloud in a variety of ways and a variety of uh, purposes. And in the last decade plus, we've definitely witnessed the right and the wrong way to move to the cloud. Uh, and I hope to share some of those lessons learned with all of you today. So here's kind of my agenda for today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit of, I'm going to start with why. Before I get into what and how, I always like to begin with why. Why move your applications and your firm to the cloud? Um, and how one goes about doing that is via what we call a private cloud. So I'll, I'll give kind of an intro and overview of what that means for anyone who's not up to speed. Uh, and then I'll dive a little deeper into how a private cloud works. I'll, uh, next, I'll move into sort of the financial case for private cloud because at the end of the day, much of this is about economy. Um, and then I'll wrap it up, as Paul said, with some Q&A. Uh, so as Paul uh, indicated, please do, as I'm, as I'm kind of working through and talking through different subjects, please do jot down your questions in the little panel there. Happy to talk through any of them uh, at the end. So let's dive right in. Why move to the cloud? Why move your tabs three, your practice master, your world docs, or your other applications to the cloud? And to really answer that question, you really have to kind of compare a cloud-based solution, and specifically a private cloud, to the alternative, which is, of course, an on-premise environment. You know, managing, owning, managing, uh, and dealing with servers on site and on-premise. Um, and whenever I talk to law firms, and I talk to new law firms, I mean, virtually every day, I'll, one of my first questions is always, what for you is the driver? You know, what are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to solve for? So what I'm going to cover next are really what I would consider the top seven reasons to move to the cloud, both in terms of actual benefits and in terms of why law firms do it when we ask them. So the first uh, reason is that compared to owning and managing an in-house IT infrastructure, the cloud is, first of all, more mobile, right? Uh, and that's probably the obvious one. It's more mobile. You can work anytime, anywhere um, from any device. Right, from the office, from the courthouse, from home, and you're not tethered to your office. So that's one reason, and again, probably an obvious one. Two, the cloud is more accessible. And by accessible, what I mean by that is you can log into and work in your applications and your data from any device. Um, maybe you're a Mac enthusiast, or maybe you love working from your Android tablet, or maybe you have a Chromebook or you want to get Chromebooks. The cloud allows you to access your tabs, your documents, your World Docs, your Outlook, from any device, right? You're no longer tied to any one ecosystem. Generally speaking, the cloud is more secure um, compared to an on-premise environment, right? Compare uh, a good uh, gold standard sort of cloud provider and all of the effort and work they put into security, uh, and that's essentially they're in the business of building and managing a secure infrastructure, and compare that to you know, what we typically see, which is a single server or a couple of servers sitting in a co-closet or a copy room in a, in a law firm. Generally speaking, the cloud is more reliable uh, than, again, a server sitting in a co-closet or a copy room. Because, again, the, the cloud company uh, is in the business, presumably, of building and managing a secure and reliable infrastructure that's up, that's maintained, that's not having issues. And you may have noticed that I added an asterisk at the end of those last two bullets uh, because 
uh, those statements are true with the right private cloud provider, meaning with a good gold standard private cloud provider. And unfortunately, uh, the cloud being more and more prevalent, more and more smaller companies uh, are sort of uh, spinning up their own cloud offering, if you will, uh, that maybe aren't suited to do it or maybe just don't have the experience really required to do it well. So I feel an asterisk is in order on those last two. Also, compared to owning and managing in-house IT, the cloud is more scalable, right? Um, with the right cloud platform, if you need to add an application, right? Let's just say you've been using Tabs 3 forever and you want to add World Docs to the mix, or you need to add a bunch of staff, or you just need to add a bunch of space. Whenever you need to add or scale anything with an on-premise environment, it almost always means buying a new server or significantly upgrading your server. There's always some spike in cost, um, and there's always some limit to how you can scale. Uh, versus a cloud, and more specifically a private cloud, you can add things incrementally as you need them. You can add space. You can add users or employees to your system. You can add new applications or take them off if you no longer need them. And your, your plan and your cost will scale up and down appropriately. Generally speaking, a cloud is going to be more economical than an on-premise in, uh, environment. Uh, on-premise IT kind of comes in very spiky. The, the costs are very spiky in nature. And by that, I mean, you know, you may have some monthly uh, IT management costs or, or billable hours. You may, every so often you're buying a new server, every so often there's a crash or a problem that creates a lot of cost. You know, it's kind of all over the place, very difficult to predict. Uh, compared to a private cloud, which is not only less total cost of ownership in most cases, but instead of capital expenditures, you have a fixed predictable monthly cost in most cases. And I'm, I'm kind of speaking generally and broadly here. Every company does this a little bit different, of course, but generally speaking, that's uh, how the cost model looks. And uh, last but not least, the cloud generally is more centralized. And by that, I mean a consistent user experience between locations. So life tends to be very simple when a law firm has a single office and everybody works from it. But as soon as you add that second location, or a few attorneys or people who work from home or another location, things become disjointed. And what we see is everybody who works from the main office, or Office A, I'll call it, has a reasonably good experience. Everything works reasonably well. But everybody in Office B or everybody who works from home has a very different experience um, because they're using a, you know, some other technology, right? They're using a VPN or log me in or something, something a little subpar, right? And it creates uh, for frustration. So the cloud delivers that consistent user experience between locations. So those are generally, uh, I, I would say, the top seven reasons so many law firms are moving to the cloud and to a private cloud. And one thing we, we continue to see as we talk to law firms and, and kind of gauge where, where people are and what they're thinking of, is a lot of law firms acknowledge those benefits. They, they want the security, or they want the mobility, or they want the, kind of the concept of getting IT off their plate, right? But they feel that, or they, they, they believe or assume that the only way to do that is to dump their software, because maybe they're using Tabs 3, or maybe they're using World Docs, or something else, something server-based, something on-premise, and they feel that the only way to get to the cloud and get all those benefits are to abandon their software and move to a web-based application. And I won't name them by name, but you probably know of them, web-based practice management uh, applications that um, may, not, uh, may not fit your firm, right? They may not do enough. They may be a little too watered down or too basic compared to more robust applications, like, again, Tabs 3, Practice Master, et cetera. Or that they have to move to that a combination of a web app plus Google Drive or OneDrive. And I'm not picking on those, but I will say that they're not the right fit for many law firms. Um, and they feel that they have to make that sacrifice. So one thing we spend a lot of time educating our audience on is that you don't have to sacrifice the software you rely on to achieve the benefits of the cloud. You can have all the benefits I just covered and keep your software, uh, and you can do that via private cloud. So I'll talk about that next. What is a private cloud? Uh, this might be review remedial for some of you, but I, I think it's worth covering. Um, so really, when we talk about server-based software, right, software that is otherwise on-premise, um, 
applications like you see in this list here, Tabs, World Docs, Time Matters, PC Law, Practice Master, all of those applications are, I'll call them traditional, right? They're traditional legal apps, and they require a server, right? If you want to use these software applications, you have to have a server. That's just the way it is. So historically, if you wanted to use applications like these, you had to buy and maintain a server in-house. Today, you can still do that, uh, or you can host them in a private cloud. So I said that these applications require a server one way or another, and in the case of a private cloud, a private cloud is the server. So it makes non-cloud software cloud-based, or sometimes I like to say it cloudifies otherwise on-premise software. And with the right solution, um, it will typically package in other essential IT services as well, right, beyond just hosting of applications. So that's a high-level overview of what a private cloud is. Let's dive a little bit deeper into how a private cloud actually works. Um, and I'm going to drill down with just a little bit more specificity. Um, and since a private cloud is ultimately a bundle of hosted and uh, other IT services, the best way to do it is to really break it down and describe the components or what's included in a private cloud service. And to do that, I'm going to use our own private cloud service called Uptime Practice as the example. Uh, ours isn't the only one out there, of course, um, but I'm very familiar with ours, so I'll use ours by way of example. So if I had to sum it up in a sentence or less, I would say that a private cloud or our own uptime practice is a hosted, fully managed IT platform for these four things. Uh, your legal software, again, such as Tabs 3, Practice Master, World Docs, for your documents. So if your firm has like a G drive or an S drive or some sort of file system, that would also live in the private cloud right alongside everything else. A platform for your email. Um, in our case, that's delivered via hosted exchange, but that could be theoretically anything. And IT support for the cloud, for your applications, and for your local environment, right? Your desktop, your laptop, your printers, etc. So that's the sentence or less, probably a little bit more than a sentence or less, description of what a private cloud is, a specifically uptime practice. And I'll drill down a little bit to kind of put some, some context or some substance to, to that description. Um, kind of in terms of what's included, again, using our own uptime practice as the example. Um, with a private cloud like ours, your firm gets all of your software hosted in the cloud, right? All of your applications. Dedicated cloud servers that are dedicated or private to your firm. Uh, and that's big and important for security, and it's really what the private in private cloud means. Uh, tons of storage for your documents, your databases. Managed backups, so we, or the cloud provider, uh, takes care of all backups, right, so that you don't have to manage that anymore. Uh, in our case, we provide SQL Server, which is uh, used or is the kind of the underlying database engine for many applications, including um, Tabs, Practice Master, and World Docs. And uh, bank rate security and compliance, in other words, again, the cloud provider is in charge of everything from firewalls to encryption to intrusion prevention to compliance, all that stuff, right? That should be built in and is in the case of uptime practice. Drilling down a little more, um, in most private clouds, and certainly in the case of uptime practice, each user gets their own virtual Windows desktop that they log into and work from. Uh, gets Microsoft Office, the full and latest version, is built in to our cloud service and I think is uh, uh, for many others as well. Gets Exchange email, in the case of Uptime Practice, with uh, unlimited email storage. And gets antivirus, both for the cloud environment as well as for your firm's local machines, your desktops, your laptops. Um, and the theme here, of course, is that everything a law firm needs kind of soup to nut from hosting of their practice management software to Office to Outlook to Exchange to antivirus, kind of A to Z is included and built into this package. And in the case of uptime practice, uh, and in my view, uh, any good law firm-centric private cloud provider, uh, unlimited support is or will be included as well. Um, and that's, uh, those two words, uh, in our case, pack a lot of meaning. Um, so we provide unlimited cloud support, uh, legal software support, local computer support, 
meaning if there's a problem again with a desktop or a laptop, even if it has maybe nothing to do with the cloud, um, maybe you just have a laptop that's acting up or, or having an issue, uh, that should be supported and covered. Uh, printer and scanner support, uh, always a, a need. Uh, network and connectivity support, so support of your local network, support of your uh, internet service provider, application upgrades, platform upgrades, and down to the little things, right? The day-to-day -day kind of things like adding and removing users or employees, configuring and troubleshooting local devices. All of that should be included uh, in your chosen, in our view anyway, in, in your chosen private cloud solution uh, and is included in ours. So now that I've kind of broken it down to kind of the key components and said this is what a private cloud is in, in terms of what's in it, right, what you get, um, let me talk a little bit about how it works or looks. Um, some of you may have seen a virtual desktop or a desktop as a service uh, solution before, and you may be familiar with it. But those of you who aren't, um, here's sort of a quick visual aid of uh, what it looks like conceptually. So in a private cloud, the private cloud is kind of the system, and the virtual desktop is how everybody logs in and uses it or interacts with it. So in the case of a private cloud, all software uh, documents and data are moved from your local servers and from your desktops into the private cloud. So in that scenario, nothing is installed uh, on your individual desktops anymore, and no data lives on your servers anymore. In fact, when we're done, typically, there are no servers on site. So the image on the left sort of represents what your local desktop or laptop would look like after a transition to the cloud. There's really nothing on it, right? There's a, as you can see, a recycle bin, a web browser, and a shortcut to log into your virtual desktop. So users do that. They sit down in the morning, they double click on their virtual desktop icon, and then that logs them into their virtual desktop, which is the image you see on the right. And that's where they'll find all of their things, right? Their Outlook, your firm's S drive, your tabs, your World Docs, everything sort of lives there. Uh, which means they can run and access your firm's applications from anywhere, even if, of course, that particular application isn't installed on that computer. So think of logging in from home and you haven't taken the time to install tabs on that workstation. You don't need to. So everything lives and runs on the server, which really allows you to untether yourself from your desktop and from your office. And ultimately, it gets servers and IT off your plate. So to kind of wrap things up here, I'll talk a little bit about the financial case. Um, so functionality is great, added security is great, added uh, mobility is great. Um, but I think the nail in the coffin for so many law firms, at least the ones I talk to, is the financial case, right, um, for a private cloud. And the financial case for private cloud is really what it replaces and what it kind of fixes and makes more constant. So I, I briefly touched earlier on kind of not only what the costs are of on-premise environments, right? You've got servers, IT support, antivirus, backups, office, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that those costs aren't fixed, right? They tend to be all over the place and up and down and frustrating. Um, so a private cloud such as uptime practice eliminates or replaces those costs with a fixed cost. So in our case, our private cloud service uh, eliminates the cost for on-premise servers in the first place server maintenance and repair and replacement, uh, is inclusive of and therefore replaces the cost of Windows and SQL Server, which are tend to be big ticket costs, uh, replaces the standalone or separate cost of backup hardware, backup software, offsite backups, and disaster recovery, eliminates unplanned disasters, uh, eliminates what you might be paying separately for Office 365 and for local antivirus. Uh, reduces costs on expensive workstations because all the software is running in the cloud. You don't need powerful workstations anymore. Managed IT and IT support fees. So all of those costs, some of which may be fixed for you, some of which may be very uh, variable, uh, are going to be replaced for one fixed monthly fee. Uh, and again, every cloud provider does this a little bit different, um, but generally speaking, it should be at least a predictable monthly fee. Um, and when we help law firms do this cost comparison, and we've got some tools on our website to help you kind of compare side by side, uh, a lot of times they'll save some money versus their on-premise world. Oftentimes it's, um, it's about on par, but what they really like is, again, that it's fixed and predictable. No surprises.
So that's, uh, that's it. We talked about that you, the benefits of moving to the cloud. Talk about how you don't have to sacrifice the software you rely on to move to the cloud and to get those benefits. We talked about what a private cloud is and how it works, and hopefully you have a better understanding of that. Uh, and of course, the financial case. Um, so I definitely encourage everyone to learn more. We'll, we'll get into some Q&A next. Um, if you do want to learn more, I invite everyone to come to our website, which is uptimepractice.com, which again is the name of our private cloud service. We've got tons of resources there, eBooks, white papers, comparison charts, checklists, lots of good content that I encourage everybody to come check out. Uh, and if for some reason you think of a question after our Q&A session next, you can email me directly. My email address is dennis.dimka at uptimelegal.com. And that said, um, so that's ready awesome. to take some questions. That's awesome. We have no questions, Dennis. Oh, oh my gosh, somebody waited till the end. Um, as we usually say, that must mean that you explained it really well. And honestly, I have never been able to explain how this works with such clarity. That's, that was very, very good. But let's see what Patty Thank says. You. Patty, what do we got going here? Um, Lillian has a question. Go ahead, Lillian. Are you there, Lillian? She raised her hand. Let me see if maybe she asked. What is the speed of the server for the workstations? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, if it, if the question is just wondering how powerful the the server is, how fast does it go? Yeah, if the, if the question is more about how fast is it and how fast is it going to perform, again, I can speak to our own private cloud service. So the way we build it is we charge a, a fixed fee per user per month. And the reason that it scales that way is because every time the more users you have in the same system and the more applications you have, the more computing resources you will require, RAM, namely, processor, things like that. So what we do is we scale those resources up, whether you're five users or 10 or 15 or, or 50, so that you have that same level of, of, of a fast, snappy, responsive system, regardless if you're, again, five users or, or 20 users. So it's sort of a vague answer, I realize. And uh, we do publish on our website exactly how many you know, gigs of RAM we give you at what levels. But our formula is based on making sure that performance is there and it's, it's nuanced to each application. Like, so for instance, tabs three, we know exactly how much RAM to allocate so that it's fast and responsive for everyone. And I hope that's a useful answer. I think it is. Do we have another one, Patty? Um, yep, there's a follow-up question there. Um, can licensed products such as Adobe Pro be installed on specific users' workstations? So in the case of a private cloud, really there's, no, there's nothing uh, regarding the workstation that comes into play or matters. Your workstations become what we call dumb terminals. Nothing lives there. Um, so we install your applications in the private cloud. And then everybody logs into their virtual desktop. Now, if the question is, and perhaps it was, can we put our Adobe or our other third-party products uh, in the private cloud in the virtual desktop? The answer is yes, uh, absolutely. And what we do is um, we provide all Microsoft software as part of our package, so SQL, Exchange, Office, et cetera, and anything non-Microsoft, so your tabs, your World Docs, maybe your QuickBooks, your Adobe, we host your existing licensing on the cloud. And um, yes, Larry would like to know what happens to all the documents that are currently stored on their server. Yeah, so your applications, documents, and email are migrated from your local environment to the cloud. So the way we do that is we have a dedicated project management team, and what they do when somebody signs up is we kind of look at all their components, uh, including their file server. So to use my example from before, let's just say your firm uses a S drive that lives on your on-premise server. That'll be one of the components that we move up, um, along with your apps, your email, your mailboxes, et cetera. Okay, and one more, Dennis. Um, Heather says that Chrome is notoriously memory hungry. Does mm -hmm. it run on your cloud, or does it need to run locally, and does running it on the cloud cause issues? It's a very good question. Um, Chrome is a memory pig, and if you read the news, they just increase the memory that it uses. Um, so we do put browsers in the virtual desktop, um, and you can really go either way. As a general rule, we do encourage our users to do the majority of their 
web browsing locally, not in the virtual desktop because of that. Now, there's sometimes you can't, right? Because perhaps you have to upload a form to your local court uh, from data that lives in your private cloud, or maybe you have to download, let's just say, a bank statement from your bank into your QuickBooks or into your tabs or something like that. So for the functions where you really have to, go ahead, that's why it's there, is what we tell our clients. For your more casual web browsing, uh, we typically encourage local just to keep resources uh, conserved and everything running really fast. Any more, Patty? Um, actually, one more just popped up. Um, how does the backup work? Is it just backed up to another private cloud, or is there a physical hardware backup? It's a good question. Um, so by default, we have um, two independent backup systems um, that we run. Uh, one is a file folder and database level, and I'm going to try to be as brief as I can um, because I could, I could talk a lot about it. Um, so that backs up files, folders, SQL databases, all of that. Um, and in addition to that, we also do what's called a bare metal backup. So that's a backup of the virtual servers in their entirety um, in case there's a Windows update that blows something up. It's rare, but you know that sort of thing is theoretically possible. So we have two deliberately intentional backups. Uh, we also have an option where we can do a tertiary backup um, to a, an appliance uh, at your site. So you have an extra, extra backup uh, and one that's in your building. Uh, which some, some law firms like just for comfort, some like because of compliance reasons. And what kind of downtime are typically experienced with private cloud servers? Depends on the provider. Um, and then there's always the guarantee, right? And then there's the actual real world history. So our guarantee, just to use us again as an example, we guarantee 99.99% uptime in a year. Anything less than that, we owe the client money back. In other words, it's a financially backed guarantee. Um, that's the guarantee and candidly, it's a pretty low bar. Uh, in reality, we've had 100% uptime for at least the last three years. Uh, and that's, just to give you some sense, that's roughly what you should look for, give or take. 100% uptime in the, in the last three years. That's yeah, you know, and I think the year before that, the downtime was, you know, there was a core router that went down in our system. Part of our system was down for, I don't know, half an hour or an hour or something like that. And it was, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's not much, but, you know, it's a big deal to us. I mean, we take this very seriously. Yeah, it's a big deal, you know, to be away from anything for a half hour or an hour if you're a lawyer. <laughs> Absolutely. I certainly know how that is. Absolutely. Uh, any more questions, Patty? No, that's all the questions. Okay. Well, Dennis, that was fabulous. Um, really, really makes it easy to uh, – hold on, hold on. Uh, I'll finish my thought. makes it easy to visualize how this all works because it's such a difficult concept to explain. Patty has one or two more questions, so go ahead, Patty. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, I don't know. Are you okay. muted? No, I'm unmuted. It looks like I was muted. Sorry about that. Okay, two more questions. Are there user minimums or maximums? Uh, it depends on the provider, but in the case of Uptime Legal, um, our plan start at a three-user minimum, and there is no maximum. And the reason it starts at a three-user minimum um, is because the value case is tougher at one or two users, right? I mean, even if you're a one-user firm, um, you're going to need a base server. Uh, you're going to need two servers by default just to, just to function, just to make everything host and work right. And it, it can be a tough value proposition at one or even two users. So for that reason, our plans start at a three-user plan. Awesome. Okay, and one more, if it's two more. If a secretary is working on something and the Internet goes down, do they lose it? Mm. I love this answer. Go ahead, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, the, the short answer is no. Um, the, so the private cloud and the virtual desktop does require Internet access. So suppose your Internet goes down for five minutes or, you know, you don't know how long. It's just down. You do lose your connectivity. Um, many of our clients deal with that in a number of ways, including getting low-cost backup Internet. But let's just say you don't. So your Internet goes down, you lose your connection, comes back in 10 minutes or whenever it comes back. Everything will be just the way you left it. Right, because the server didn't shut down; it was there. You just couldn't get to it, uh, and that's the beautiful part about a private cloud, or I should say, one of the cool things about a private cloud. I'm going to say this again. One more question: um, How would we request a quote? So, if you'd like to learn more. Uh, you can come to our website. Uh, you can email me at the uh, email address I shared earlier, which 
I'll back up here again. I'm uh, Dennis.Dimka at UptimeLegal.com if that's easier. Or you can jump right to our website, UptimePractice.com, and there's a Contact Us button prominently displayed right at the top. Is that it, Patty? That is it. Okay. Well, we're going to cut it there because I am 10 minutes late for my President's Circle meeting at Tabs 3. Uh, so I'm going to switch back real quick to me and just show everybody how to get to the recorded version of this uh, webinar when it comes out or any other webinar that we have. Let's see. Make presenter. Show my screen. And so basically, uh, this and every other webinar that we've ever given, plus uh, a lot of pre-recorded content that is, didn't originate as a live broadcast, is going to be at attorneycomputersystems.com. So if you go there, and I'd like to emphasize that last S, attorneycomputersystems.com, uh, without that last S, you won't get to the right place, and you click on videos, you will end up at a screen that outlines uh, all six of our titles, if you will, four of them being live events. Of course, right now we're at a coffee pot webinar, which is where I talk on a monthly basis with people from companies that provide products that add value to our core products, which of course are Tab3, Practice Master, and World Docs. We do also have our virtual user group meetings in, you guessed it, Tab3, Practice Master, and World Docs. Uh, and uh, we also have our eBytes video series. It's a pre recorded series. Mary Jo records three of these each month, one on, you guessed it, tabs three, one on World Docs, one on Practice Master. They're little two, three minute videos that take something really cool that we think we should share that we can explain very concisely in a very short period of time. And then we have the Paul and Mary Joe show, which is basically the same thing, but a longer format. We release one of these each month, and they're usually at least 10 minutes long, sometimes they're 15 20 minutes, sometimes even longer, where we take a broader topic that can't be explained quite so quickly and really, really dig deep into it. Now, if you click on the More Info button, you will find that we have uh, more information. Uh, we have, uh, you'll, you'll find information about that specific title, including a very short description. Uh, this is a the current webinar, so in, in about, oh, what, an hour, Patty, this will change to next month's, okay? And when you are registering, we have two links that we give you because some people don't like to click on a link without being able to see what it is. And But then as you scroll down, you will get to recorded versions of everything else we've ever done. We have, every time I say this, I say I'm going to count, and I never do. We have somewhere between 800 and 1,000 videos on our site, and we put out uh, I believe it's nine of them every month. So there's, it's a huge uh, bevy of content that grows every month. Uh, so please uh, take advantage of it. It's there for you to, to come back to listen to, to hear Dennis explain all this stuff again when you want to show it to somebody else. It's a place to learn about new things. It's a place to go to look to, to find out how to do something like email statements or, uh, or uh, do payroll with a product that integrates with tabs. So anything, the, almost anything that you'd want to learn uh, about those three products is going to be here. So uh, that's it. Thank you, Dennis. It was a most enjoyable and most informative. And uh, we will see everybody next month. And uh, until then, have a great time. Bye-bye, everybody.